Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find a linear regression equation using the TI Inspire. Um, a linear regression equation or the line of best fit is the line that minimizes the distance between each of the points in the scatter. Um, it takes into account every single point that is in the scatter plot. So if you have any influential points or anything like that, that may have more of a weight on your actual um, slope and y intercept. For this, I'm not going to go into the actual formula of how your slope and your y-intercept are calculated. I'm just going to show you specifically how to use the TI Inspire to help you come up with this. And there is more than one way. And depending upon the information that you need, if you just need the line of best fit, I will show you that. If you need the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient and you want to make predictions, I will also show you how to do that. So the first thing is, is in order to create a, or to find a linear regression equation, you do have to have bivariate data, which means that you have two variables. In this case, what we have is we have the age and years of 10 men and their systolic blood pressures in millimeters of mercury. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say that age or is our X or our explanatory variable. It explains the outcome or the response, the systolic blood pressure. So this is called the response variable, where age is called the explanatory variable. Now, depending upon which course you are in, because I know linear regression is found in algebra courses and it's also found in statistics courses. So this, I, I'm trying to encompass all levels of math here. So I am talking about different methods. If you are in an algebra class or a couple of the stats textbooks, uh, the one that I currently teach from actually uses this equation, um, but it's typically used more often in an algebra course. Um, the y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form of a line, is just the line or the regression equation of the line of best fit. Um, if you're in a stats class, you would put a hat on your y, and that just represents that this is your predicted y, val um, y value. If it has just y, that means it's an observed value. And the y hat is saying, hey, I'm making a prediction of what I think it might be at that point. Um, most stats textbooks use this form where they start with the y-intercept first plus the slope times x, so they just reverse the order of the two. Um, so depending upon that you're, the course that you're in, you would look to see which of the formulas you would use based on your textbook. So in order to come up with the regression equation, the first thing that you need to do is open a spreadsheet screen and put this information into your calculator. I have already done that. I have already... Um, entered it into a spreadsheet, but just to start, like what you would do is you would start from the home page, and you can start with a new document and add a spreadsheet screen. So you would just add one of these screens. Um, like I said, I've already entered all of the data, um, so I don't need this, but this is what you would do is you would start with an open one, and then you'd put your age, your blood pressure, and then put all of your information in. Um, since I don't need that screen, I'm going to go ahead and come up here and just delete it. So if you hit control and the up, it gives you all of your open documents. And I can just delete that one since I don't need it. But if you go through, and I've already verified, um, I do have my 10 scatter plots listed. And I did check to make sure that all of them match up. So like the 22, 118, 57, 175. It is very important that these line up with each other. Like if I put 16 with 122, it's going to throw off the whole analysis. So you do want to make sure that the 16 and the 109 and the 25 and the 122 etc. are lined up correctly because otherwise you will get the wrong equation. Okay, so when you're coming up with a regression line, you always want to look at the scatter plot to see um, that a linear regression is acceptable because there's also quadratic regression or there's exponential regression or logarithmic regression. So you want to look at your scatter plot before you do anything. So I'm just going to hit control and I and I'm going to open up a new data and statistics screen. So option five. Um, I'm going to click down here to add a variable, and I want to add age. And then I'm going to add my response variable, which is my blood pressure or my Y value. And the thing that I really like about this in the TI Inspire is that it does give you your labels. So if you had to put this on paper, it gives you a suggestion of how to label it. Um, it also labels your X and your Y, your explanatory and your um, response variables, so that's nice. 
Um, so you can actually find the regression equation directly on this screen. If you just need the regression equation and not the correlation coefficient and you don't want to make predictions or anything like that, you can do your equation on here. So to do that, we would do menu and option four, analyze. And if you notice, option six says regression. So what we want to do is we want to show, and you can show, notice it gives us both options. We can either use the statistics option or we can use the MX plus B option. I'll show you both so you can see that it will set it up for you. So if I say show linear MX plus B, notice it draws the regression line in here. We can see that it's a pretty good fit. The only point that doesn't really fit is this one over here. Um, but all of the rest of the points are very, very close to that line. Um, and then you can see that this is my slope. I can grab this equation and move it so that we can see it a little bit better. Um, notice that it gives me my slope, my x, and then my y-intercept. So you could just write this down. So if that was the format that you were using, like I said, if you're using an algebra textbook um, or you're using this one, we could do option one. We could say that y equals 1.629x plus 80.241, and I just rounded to three decimal places. Um, so this would be for an algebra course. If you were in an algebra course, this is what you would use. If your stats textbook uses this, you would actually write it as 1.629x with the hat on it. Um, so this would be for a few stats textbook. So let me show you option two which is to use the a plus bx. And if you notice, if we go back to here, um, option four, analyze. And this time I want to show two, the linear regression. Now notice what it did was it switched and it puts the y-intercept first and the slope second. So it literally puts it in the format that you need it in. So option two is for the other stats textbooks. And you would just say that y hat equals 80.241 plus 1.629x. So it just reversed the order of the slope and the y-intercept. And a lot of stats textbooks will actually even take it a step further from this, and they'll actually name the response variable and the explanatory variable. So they may say that this is the blood pressure and then put a hat over that to say that it's the predicted value 80.241 plus 1.629 times the age. So now with this, if you wanted to make predictions, this screen is not very helpful for predictions because all it does is it gives you the equation of the line. So let's say that we wanted to predict values of x. Um, So maybe we wanted to predict the blood pressure for the following ages. So let's say that we said 60, let's say that we said 25, and let's say that we said 85. Now the first thing that you want to do before you make a prediction is you want to look at your x variables to make sure that these are in the range of your known data set. So 60, 25, and 85, if we go back up here, notice that our lowest one is 16, our highest is 70. So we really only want to predict for things within those values or very close to those. So if you have any values that fall outside of your range, be careful about making predictions because that's called extrapolation. And a lot of times extrapolation can get you into trouble. So with this one, since 85, this one is extrapolating. So it's not meaningful. So you could just write down your blood pressure and use your formula. So we could say that our predicted Y value is going to equal 80.241 plus 1.629 times 60. And for this one, we would do y, equal, y hat equals 80.241. And it doesn't matter which of your equations you use. Um, 
But like I said, if you want to, you can do this by hand, like just plug those into your calculator. But if you have to make quite a few predictions, you can also use your calculator to help you with that. So what we can do is I can control I and I'm going to add a calculator screen. And this time I'm gonna come up with the regression equation in here. So here's your other option of coming up with your regression equation. And I'm gonna to go to, um, after I hit the menu and statistics, I'm gonna to go to option one, stat calculations. And then notice that we have both three and four. I'm gonna use option four just because um, most of the time predictions are made more in statistics. It doesn't matter, like I said, both of them will give you the same prediction. So I would do age, um, blood pressure, and then notice right here it's saving, save regression equation to know where you're saving it to. So this one is saving it to F1. So if I actually went into my graph screen and I opened a graph screen, it would show in F1 the equation of this line. I'm not gonna go into that because I'm gonna show you a shortcut with just using your calculator screen to make predictions. So I would click OK, and notice at the top it gives you the regression equation A plus BX, and it says to plug in for A 80.2406, which is what we got before, the B plus 1.628. So it just tells you where to plug A and B into the regression equation. Okay, and if you remember, we stored this in F1, so what I can do is I can type in F1. Notice that it bolds it and it uprights it, and then I can put in the value that I want to predict. So our first one that we wanted to predict was 60, so instead of plugging it in by hand, I can do F1 60 and hit enter, and it gives me 177.97. So the predicted is 177.97, this would be our predicted blood pressure. So if we look up here to see if it's kind of reasonable, if we find something that's around 60, um, notice that 64 was 185, um, 57 was 175, so 177.97 seems like a reasonable answer. Um, for the next one, for the 25, we could go back in and we can just plug in the 25. Um, you can again just do the F1 or you can copy and paste, it doesn't matter. And then you would just type in the 25 and enter and it will plug it in and we would say that it's expected to be 120.961. So that's how you can use your graphing calculator to help predict. Um, Sorry about the length of this. I know I kind of went a little bit long. It's just there's so much things that can be done in here. So I'm trying to encompass it all into one video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.